The title of our study is Connected to God. Now we take a reading from Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 and 17. And he said, Hacken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. What a comforting word. It says that the king, King Jehoshaphat, and all Judah were troubled because the enemies or enemies came and gathered in multitudes, in great multitudes. Three nations gathered to fight the little or small Judah. In comparison, they were quite small. And so Jehoshaphat was afraid. Now the Spirit of God came on his prophet and he prophesied. And he said to Jehoshaphat, listen to what the Lord says. Be not afraid nor dismayed because of these great multitudes. It's not your battle, it's my battle. I want to show them how to fight. I am the man of war. I, they, they've missed the way. You don't need to fight in this battle. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. You see, Jehoshaphat kept this salvation that's why the scripture teaches us he said receive the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul so he says that they should stand still and see the salvation of the lord with them Amen. see this salvation is awesome this salvation came by Jesus Christ. He said, you will see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord whom you have kept will save you. Fear not. Be not dismayed. And then see what this salvation will do for you. You know, God has given us salvation. Say this salvation is Jesus Christ himself. God has saved us and given us total freedom. And now he says that this freedom they have cannot be defeated. Jesus says, you will be free indeed. Says Jehoshaphat, you have kept the Lord. You know, Jehoshaphat took to the word of God, to the Bible. He was not just a claimant. No, he was a doer. He kept the word as they were commanded. As Moses, as the Lord commanded Moses to command them, so he handed it over the generation and he came to this king. Other kings lived before him and they didn't keep the word, they failed. But this man studied and discovered the secret of his forefather, David, and then he took to the Bible. He taught Judah the word of God. So the Lord was with them. And he says that when the enemy came to fight, the Lord said, no, I am the fighter. I will fight for you. 
See, that's why God wants us to keep this salvation, wants us to have him, and so that in the day of trouble, he will fight for us. It was unannounced. Joseph didn't plan for this. He was not expecting it. It came suddenly on them. The enemy planned, and they came to attack. You know, this life we are living in, certain problem comes, I come to people, not because they want it or they are expecting it. It comes suddenly. The scripture teaches us that problem is common. Is if you have a problem, it's not specific to you, to any one of us. You say it happened just like that because we are living in a world of trouble. Someone living in a place where there is cold, everybody will be feeling cold. But what did God say? He says, I will make a way for you to escape the trouble. Now, Joseph had kept the word, which God says he will keep you from every evil. He will keep you from trouble. And then when trouble came to his kingdom, his reign, the Lord delivered him. And listen to what the scripture records for us further in verse 22 of Second Chronicles 20. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Man. Why was it so? The Lord said, I will fight for you. Yeah. Now it happened that we are living in a time that there is war and rumors of war. And then we know that when war came to a nation, then that nation, though it was small and not so powerful, asked for help from other nations, that can help them see and so it was able to do that because they had they were connected they had affiliation and so when trouble came to their door they called for help and though the country that thought it can just overrun the other small country it couldn't do that because of the help they received now think about it that God is the ultimate helper. And to have God at you, as your helper, that is awesome. So in the case of Joseph, he did not affiliate to other nations, natural nations. He affiliated to the heavenly nations. He affiliated to the heavenly government. And so when trouble came, help came. Yes. Not from earth, from heaven. And he says that when these three nations that came to fight them, they look at them physically and thought they can just walk over them and deal with them. But what they discover is that the people they came to fight, they are singing, praising the beauty of holiness. And then he now says that the Lord set ambushments Amen. against the children of Ammon and Moab. And Mausia, the Lord shall set up bushments against your enemy, Amen. against any trouble that want to trouble you. So he says, let the Lord be with you. Because this Lord is not far from Jehoshaphat or Judah. He was with them. And so that's why he fought for them. Jesus says that we should open for him. When he comes in, he will fight for us. In verse 23, of Second Chronicles 20, for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. See, the people that came to fight started fighting themselves. That's their bushman. They were confused. So they, their mind was changed. Then they started teaming and ganging up to fight each other. So they said, Moab and Ammon, brothers, they fought Mount Seir. And when they utterly slay them, they now face each other. Moab against Ammon, then they destroy each other. And that's how the Lord finished all of them. They didn't fight in this battle. 
But Judah did not throw any arrow. And so are you of him? That's why when we were praying, he tells us that the mountain of the house of God shall be exalted above all the mountains and hills. And then the inhabitants of that city, you know, said, Oh, you, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, hear in the word of the Lord. So that's why God wants us to be inhabitants of Jerusalem. I'm not saying that you should go to physical Jerusalem and go and buy tickets and travel to Jerusalem in the east, in the Middle East. No. The scripture says, you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Please be an inhabitant of Jerusalem. This heavenly city of God. He said to this city of God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the church of the firstborn, and the innumerable company of holy angels. You see this war, it, it's the spirit told Joseph, you don't need to fight. It's spiritual war, it's heavenly war. It's a war that they cannot handle. And so they will show them that they have come to the wrong place. You see, God wants us to do in this place. He said, once you are an inhabitant of this place, of this city of God, how do you do so by faith? We dwell in him, he dwells in us. Is there anyone that is such who has help? Is there the help the person will get is help from God? For vain is the help of man. For the help of God is not vain. Jesus says, I will give you another helper and the comforter. Now, it says that these people did actually not fight in the battle. Who fought for them? The Lord. Who is the Lord? The word of God, which they kept. And that's why God wants us to keep the word of God. There's nothing he cannot do. He can fight your battles for you. He can heal you if you are sick. He can deliver you. That's why it says, once you come to this city, it's called the mountain of deliverance. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. There he finish all the enemies. And so he said he disarmed these people, and then they made the public show of them. You see, that's why God is calling us that in times of trouble, you need God. But he said before the trouble comes, you have to receive this God. It's not in the day of trouble you start scrambling for. No. It says, the spirit said by the prophet of Joseph, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord whom you have believed, whom you have kept. This is the time, the time has come. And so that's why God keeps speaking to us concerning his word, that we should be connected. We should be having this relationship with God. You see, everything, some people want to have relationship to a president, to a rich man, to somebody in position of power. But the truth is that God wants us to have relationship with him. Number one, he does not change. Number two, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Number three, he has resources to help us. He does not die. You see, if you rely on someone and suddenly the person dies, you see, the person will feel helpless. Now he says that these people took to the undiable, the unchangeable God, the living God. That's why he's calling us to himself so that we receive the living. We should be connected to the living, and the living will always be available to help us. Now, he said this by the prophet to a king before Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, in verse 2 and 3. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If you seek him, 
he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. You see, says that we have to receive God and this God have to be with us. It's not claiming. No, he says that the Lord is with you as long as you are with him. That is, you keep him. In verse 3, now for a long season, Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. It says that Israel, though, is the land of God, the people of God, but they did not have this God. They were still religious. Today, as we know it, we still go to church, but they were not connected. They were disconnected from God, from the true God. They have other gods they were worshiping or they were might of, but they didn't know the Lord, their God. And they were in the state that is vulnerable, helpless. That's why he sent his prophet to the king and said to the king, Asa, the Lord is with you as long as you are with him. If you leave him, he will leave you. And so that's why God is saying to us that we should receive him. Jesus came so that he will be received. He said he came to his own. His own received him not. Look at it. He was in the word. The word was made by him. The word knew him not. Who is this person? The word of God. Where do we have him today? In the Bible. He gave this word to the Israelites by Moses. He said he came to these same people. He gave the scriptures. They didn't know him. They didn't know his voice, the God of the Holy Scriptures. The spirit that spoke through all his prophets did not know him. So they didn't receive him. But today it says that anyone Anywhere that we hear the sound of the voice of this spirit that is speaking loud and clear and say, my son, my daughter, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. As Joseph had gave his heart to him and he said, Joseph, had stand still. Watch. I will fight for you. I am not ordinary. I am that God of Abraham, God of Isaac. I am God. Amen. I live it. And you will see today that the God you believe is alive. He will fight for you. He has proof. He says that these people, though they were his people, for a long season, they didn't have God. Thank God, when he came to the time of Joseph, years later, they had God. He fought by their battle for them. You see, God wants us to have God. Because this world we are living in has trouble. It changes. It's like weather. It can change suddenly. We think of what we hope in. We think it's all secure and everything in place can scatter in one go. So if that was the condition of Judah. All their hope, everything that was so secure, suddenly there was war came unannounced. You see, that's why God says, be ready. Because they were ready, prepared, then the Lord. Fought for them. How did God say we should do that? Listen to what the apostle wrote for us in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Think about it. He's talking of the Gentiles. He says, we Gentiles, we were in the world, but without God. We are still existing, but we don't have this through God. In verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. He says, through Christ, we are not connected to the true God. Who is Christ? The Holy Bible. The word he gave to the Israelites. He says the Savior was of the Jews. Jesus told the woman of Samaria, he says the salvation is of the Jews. That's why the Spirit told Joseph, stand still and see the salvation of, of God. 
Now he says that we were hopeless without God. Now he said we can have God today. Who made it possible? Jesus Christ. He opened the door. That's why he says anywhere. In any continent, in any nation that will receive him, he will give them the ability, the right to become sons and daughters of God. Says so we who were far from God, he has brought us near. In verse 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. He says, through Jesus Christ, we are connected to God, and the only way we can be connected to God. That there is no other way we can be connected to God except through the Bible. And that's why we preach him. To preach the word to every nation. That's what he said. He said that he will begin, this preaching will begin in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the utmost part of the world. What are we supposed to preach? He said, preach the word. And now he says, anyone that believes is connected, is brought near. To God through faith. What a wonderful God we have. He says, once you are connected to this God, as he fought for Joseph, you are covered. Amen. As Joseph didn't need to fight in the battle that came to him, so also you don't need to fight. He is no respecter of person, God is not partial. He says, he fought for Joseph and fought for Judah, he will fight for you today Amen. in any way. Where he sees anyone receive him. All that it takes is to believe. So he's saying to us that we are to believe. That when we hear this word of God preached to us, we should receive him by faith. And that those who did so in the past benefited. They, began, they now have these awesome resources of God. They have this amazing provision of God for them. And they were not alone anymore. As nations want help from other nations to help them, he said, now you have help. Amen. Jesus says, this help is so wonderful that it cannot run out. And that's why he tells this clearly, this is how to be connected to God. In John chapter 14, listen to what he says to us in verse 23 and 24. Jesus Answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our boat with him. Amen. See, God that fought for Joseph didn't come from another planet. The God that fought for him didn't come from some secret place. No, he was with him. Why was he with him? Because Joseph was with him. The whole of Judah were with this God. Jesus says the only way you can have this God is you keep his word. That if you love me, keep my word. And my father will love you. Who is the father? The Holy Spirit that gave birth to the scripture. You know that every scripture in the Bible came from one spirit, one Holy Spirit. So that's why he calls his word his son. Is it different from God? No. You cannot separate a man from his word. Neither can you separate the word of God from God. That's why Jesus says, I am a father I want. And then he says that you really want to be connected to God, receive the word of God. Amen. Now in verse 24, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which I, you hear is not mine. But the Father which sent me. Oh, wonderful. Please be connected to this God. He says that the people of Mausia, Moab, Ammon, they look at Judah. Judah was so small. They thought it's a walkover. Let's go around them over and take over the city and we crush them. But they jam the stone of Israel. The jam, they, they came in face to face. He said to Saul, it is impossible for you to kick against the truth. And so when they came, they suffered catastrophic destruction. 
Now that's why God is calling us. Say this word of God is a crusher, is Jesus say is a stone. Now, if one comes suddenly on it, like they came, they stumble and they fell. Now he said, This stone also can descend on a problem and you crush it. Who is this? The word of God he is so powerful. He says that when it comes upon your problem, you will finish them all. And then it was the word of God that confused the people that came to fight Judah. And so they now turn their heart against themselves. They want to fight. They say, okay, you fight yourself first. When you fight, and there's enough fight for you. You won't fight with Judah. So anything they want to fight you, God shall set them to fight themselves. Amen. And you will escape. Oh, you take all it takes, he said, all it takes is to receive this God. Now in verse 24, he said, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. The words which I you hear is not mine. So that's why God is calling us to himself. He wants us to enter him, he went out. As we are rounding up, listen to another John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, it says that the basis of us getting help from God is that God will abide in us. We abide in him. He is not an outsider. He is an inside God. Now, he said this God that is inside you, and you are inside him, you... You will ask him whatever you want, he will do it for you. That is amazing connection. That is awesome. You have this God you can boast with. This God that can fight people in the midst of fire. That's why he delivered people from fire. People went through waters, he didn't drown them. Says that he is awesome God. That is awesome God, Jesus says, is the Bible that God has given to us, that we should not abide in the flesh. You know, some people abide in the flesh. He says so, such person will be ashamed. But anyone who takes to the word of God, as we are hearing it, says that you have a helper. You have one that you are connected to, is bigger than anyone on earth, is richer than anyone that you ever know. He's more powerful than any power. Who is this power? The power of God. Awesome. Now a final scripture in Psalm 50, verse 15. The psalmist says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. See, he said the, the people of Judah, they were singing praises. Praising who? Glorifying their God. They are not glorifying the moting calf. No, they were not glorifying the works of men's hands or imagination. No, they were glorifying the Lord God of the Bible. They were glorifying mm -hmm. He that they have heard of, that delivered their forefathers, that the word God sent, healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He says, as they were praising God, He helped them. He now He says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. Why is it so? He said, because you are with me, I'm with you. Because you have me, I have you. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. That is why he is calling us to himself. Who is calling us? The God of the Bible is, as you are hearing, he wants us to be connected because he said there is trouble. If there was no trouble, why did he say, call upon me the day of trouble? Say when the people who are having trouble are going down, you will say there is a lifting up. God will be glorified in your life. As he was glorified in the stories we read in the Bible, it says, this is your turn. You are living today. Joseph has finished his time and is resting. We are the one alive on earth today. Now he says we can have the same privilege, the same abundance, and that is available to us. If we receive him, we can call on him. Hallelujah. Amen.
כל הפעמים, הנה די הצבור, כל הפעמים, I will answer, I will answer you, כל הפעמים, הנה די הצבור, כל הפעמים, I will answer you. We are going to call on him. That's why we have him. Somebody who has someone who can help him. When he has problem, he will say, my friend, uh, Mr. Man, help me. You ask, you make your request known to the person. So God says, I'm available. I'm here for you. And I have the solution. All you need to do, make your request known to God, to me. Then I will deliver you. Then you will glorify me. So let's pray. And so God, I don't know what is bothering you. I don't know what is in your mind right now that is weighing your heart down and making you to be afraid. Like Joseph, I was afraid. And they gathered themselves to, before God to pray. So we are gathered together. No matter where we are right now, but we are gathered together before this God who is a spirit. He said, call upon me in the times of trouble. In the midst of your trouble, I will answer you. I will deliver you. Ask him, make your request known to him now. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Almighty Savior, eternal spirit, we call unto you, O God, that you said, in the times of trouble, that's when we know that our God is awesome. 